so welcome back. We have another episode in the Money series today. Um, it's actually, I think it's the second time he's appeared in this series. So this we, year, yeah, right, right, this, this year. year, yeah. Um, so we have Matthew. Um, he's got another big commission check for another fantastic quarter. I think it's another $50,000 he's taking home, which is not bad. His salary this year is pretty punchy. Uh, I think he's going to earn around uh, 20 million Japanese yen this year, which uh, put him at the same level as some, some, some pretty good CEOs in the market, I yeah, think. Yeah. Not bad for a 29 years old guy. Not bad at all. Uh, Matthew is, is a great example of uh, somebody that really benefited from coming and work here at Cornerstone. I mean, managed to, I think, quadruple uh, his billing. Going from uh, being a good recruiter to being one of the top three recruiters in the uh, luxury market in Japan. He moved into management, running uh, what is now uh, one of the top three teams in Cornerstone Group in Japan. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Number two top builder. <laughs> I mean, it feels like, uh, you know, Seeing 50k on your bank account, uh, it feels great. Uh, it's definitely life changer. I think it's the second time I get this type of commission, so it really feels amazing to see in the bank account when you wake up the balance in your account. And hopefully, not seeing it go down too fast, but yeah, it feels, feels great. I mean, there's a lot of reason. Uh, I think, first of all, would be the, the company itself. I mean, the group, you know, we have a network. It feels good that it's not only fully yourself, you know, achieving it. There's also stuff coming your way from referrals or from other teams that you can build on as well. So you can definitely make more than if you were just alone or in a small company. So first would be the, yeah, the network of the company. And then I would say, you know, the training we get uh, every day um, in, in the company, it really helps you sharpen up your, your skills as a recruiter. So yeah, that would be the two main points. Um, so yeah, not spending it is the goal. I want to, you know, accumulate the, the, the money as much as I can. Trying to invest it in small portions here and there um, as we go. But yeah, the goal is to keep it in the bank account, accumulate it and just keep growing it as much as possible. Yeah. No more Kenzo. Yeah, I've already spent enough <laughs> on the brand. So I'm chilling a bit on that and trying not to yeah, spend, spend too much money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think my next, probably my next uh, little pleasure would be buying a surfboard. I've been considering, you know, more and more as I always go. Um, so yeah, maybe buying a surfboard might be the next next thing. And it's not, it's not too cheap, honestly. I think from my experience, you know, I've been in the same industry for like four years and a half. So I think being really patient and working in your niche industry is really important. Sticking to it so that, you know, you get to know everyone. And that's why I say to new recruiters as well is in your niche, everyone should know you and you should know everyone as well. And I think that's, it takes time, but you know, uh, you need to have a really solid network in your industry. And from there, the top builder will, uh, will come naturally, I think. What I, what I advise as well is when you get a job, you contact people, right? But what I advise usually is even when you don't get a job, contact people just to get an update, just you know, to chit chat five minutes and at least people get to know you, they get to trust you and that's how you're going to build the network. Not only contacting candidates when you get a job, but also con contacting them, you know, the pool of candidates in the market constantly just to get an update. Hey, how are you? Are you still looking? Where are you interviewing? That's done. Even if you don't get a job, at least you get some info, they get to know you a little bit more and yeah, that's how you, you build it. So yeah, I think in the surfing area, uh, big wave surfers is something that really inspire me. Like people like Kai Laney, for example, is the main mainstream one or Lucas Chumbo. Those guys are just amazing. I mean, you see them riding waves that basically can kill you if you fall and they do crazy things on it. Like they will even do tricks like jump and do a 180 or 360 on the wave. And it's just looking at it, it's, it's really inspiring, you know, seeing these people mastering these massive natural, you know, uh, elements. And yeah, it just keep inspiring yourself to push, you know, boundaries and keep going um, for more, yeah. 
Yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, like, and <laughs> like and subscribe, please. <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Money Series. And hit the like button, subscribe, and drop us a comment. And also, if you're someone that really wants to become a top villa, we're the place to be. We're paying the highest commission in the Japan market, so hit us up.